couple of years ago, I made the somewhat bold prediction that ESPN would cease to exist, at least in its current format by 2030. And to be perfectly honest with you, it would not surprise me if ESPN ceased to exist altogether by 2030. In order for a business to succeed in the marketplace, that business has to fill a market need. For example, if the vast majority of Americans knew how to install or fix their own plumbing issues, there would be absolutely no need for a company like Roto-Rooter. For decades, stores like Blockbuster, Tower Records, they were making billions of dollars. Remember how major record labels, they would release new CDs every Tuesday? There would be lines out the door of people waiting on Tower Records to open. When is the last time you've seen a Tower Records or a Blockbuster video store? As time passed on, the need they provided in the market diminished. Right now, ESPN is standing at a crossroads. Executives at ESPN, they are frantically trying to figure out what the hell they're going to do to stop all the bleeding. ESPN's facing a situation that no business wants to find themselves in. Right now, ESPN's trying to figure out what purpose they serve. What do we offer that people need? What do we offer that people can't get anywhere else? What differentiates ESPN? What sets them apart? The hard truth is nothing. Last Friday, CNBC released a report on ESPN. I found the timing of this release to be rather interesting. When organizations feel obligated to release information to the public, but they don't want the masses to know about it, they release the report on Friday afternoon when everybody's getting ready for the weekend. But according to CNBC, Disney is looking to sell a minority ownership in the worldwide leader in Woke. Right now, Disney owns 80% of ESPN, while the other 20% is owned by some company called Hearst, which is exactly what ESPN is going to be riding in the back of on their way to the Woke Cemetery real soon. The question is, though, why? Why would Disney be willing to sell ownership in ESPN? Look, I am not an expert in the world of business, but in my uninformed opinion, there's a couple of reasons for a company to need to sell a minority stake in their business. One, they need to raise capital for future growth. Obviously, that does not apply to ESPN since they're in serious decline. Two, the business is struggling financially. They need funding. But in the case of ESPN, I don't think it's either one. For ESPN, I think they're trying to do this to save money. According to CNBC, ESPN's engaged in preliminary discussions with the NFL, the NBA, and Major League Baseball. They want the leagues to purchase stock in the network. Now, why would this be beneficial to ESPN? Well, maybe they're offering the leagues billions of dollars in ownership shares to negate the cost of their broadcast rights deals. Every year, ESPN pays billions of dollars to broadcast the NFL and the NBA. When the worldwide leader in Woke had over 100 million subscribers through cable and satellite, paying exorbitant fees to broadcast the NFL, the NBA, no big deal. Problem is, ESPN's lost nearly 30 million subscribers in the last 10 years, with most of those subscriber losses coming in the last three or four years. In the first quarter of 2023 alone, ESPN's lost almost 1 million subscribers. At nearly $8 per month per subscriber, ESPN's lost $220 million every month in revenue. You multiply that number by 12, and you see the problem here. ESPN. They are facing a situation where revenue's going up and broadcast, no, revenue is going down and broadcast rights are going up. One of the problems when you're paying billions of dollars for the NFL, the NBA, Major League Baseball, the NHL, whatever, the content, it's only good for three hours. Once Monday Night Football ends, that game is completely useless to ESPN. Once the NBA Finals are decided, that series provides ESPN no value. Networks like TBS or, or the USA Network, for example, they'll pay millions of dollars for old shows like Friends or Law & Order. Back in 2018, Warner Media, they paid $100 million for the right to air reruns of Friends. But the thing is, since Friends aired its last episode probably close to 20 years ago, the show's generated $1.4 billion just to the actors and creators alone. There is no telling how much money reruns have made for networks that air it in syndication.
Sports do not provide that same value to networks like ESPN. They're paying billions to broadcast it live, and once it's over, it's completely useless. Have you tried to find ESPN Classic on your TV lately? Go ahead. Go ahead. Try to find it. It doesn't exist. Because airing classic games that happened 5, 10, 15, 20 years ago, they don't draw an audience. ESPN produces very little original content, and the original content they produce is absolute garbage. Their opinion shows suck, around the horn, disaster. Woke take, God. Woke take is no longer a debate show. It's an echo chamber. It's a platform of never-ending woke hug and constant cries of mythical racism. There's only so many times someone like Ryan Clark can pretend to be a fake victim before it's no longer entertaining. And don't even get me started with shows like NBA Today or NFL Live. They can't attract Leah Thomas to the women's locker room. When your lead NFL analyst is Mina Kimes, who has as much experience playing in the NFL as bearded Bob with a surgically removed knob, your network has a serious lack of credibility. In order for ESPN to survive, they have got to find a way to maintain their relationship with the NFL and the NBA, which is probably why they are trying to get creative by offering them ownership stake in their struggling network, possibly in exchange for their broadcast rights. But here's the problem. How does this benefit the NBA? How does this benefit the NFL? Why would they leave billions of dollars on the table to gain ownership in a struggling, antiquated television network? If ESPN can't afford to keep the NBA, who cares? They can take their business to NBC, which would cover the NBA a hell of a lot better than ESPN does. The NFL, they've got partnerships with Fox, CBS, Amazon. The NFL doesn't need ESPN. ESPN needs the NFL. But KC, ESPN's looking to go with a full streaming model. This deal would give the NFL and the NBA access to millions of new viewers. Ah, uh, yeah, maybe, maybe, but why do they need ESPN to do this? Streaming is the future, there's no doubt about that, but we are still years away from television networks embracing a full streaming model. I mean, half the country still has cable and satellite. But let's just assume for a second that streaming is the most viable option for the NFL and the NBA in the next five years. What the hell would they need ESPN for? They've got plenty of time to build their own streaming service. They can go direct to consumer, charge whatever the hell they want every month. People can watch out-of-market games. They can watch whatever game they want. I don't see how owning a minority stake in ESPN benefits the NFL and the NBA. According to CNBC, one of the other of the many hurdles that could stop a potential deal from happening between ESPN and a major sports league, they're calling it a journalistic conflict of interest. If the NBA owns a piece of ESPN, this could impact their integrity. It could create doubt amongst viewers that journalists at ESPN aren't objective with their coverage of the NBA. Isn't that already the case? Do you think there's any objectivity at ESPN when it comes to their coverage of the NBA? I can remember during the summer of 2020, it was nothing but praise at ESPN when the NBA embraced mythical racism. They covered up the fact that ratings for the NBA Finals, record lows. They blamed it on everything but the truth. It's the Kobe, it's cord cutting, it's the time of year. No. It's the NBA's embrace of the woke wiener. There is a reason we see ESPN lay off hundreds, maybe even thousands of employees every two years. If I remember correctly, I believe there have been layoffs at ESPN every other year since 2017. Hell, we're in the middle of their latest round of layoffs right now. Over the last few weeks, we have seen woke legends lose their woke welfare. Even the pastor of Woke United Methodist, Father Jalen Rose, even he wasn't immune from being fired. I mean, when those collection plates are empty on Sunday mornings, the pastor usually the first one to go. ESPN. ESPN is looking for a lifeline. They're looking for a savior. In a couple of months, 
Disney is going to release ESPN's financials for the first time. Now, in the past, ESPN's numbers, they have been mixed in with Disney's financials. But hell, with the way things are going at Disney, their financials are going to look like shit. I would imagine going to be the same for ESPN. I think what we could see next is the shutting down of divisions and networks. Like I said earlier, they've already shut down ESPN Classic. SEC Network, owned by ESPN, completely useless. Longhorn Network, owned partially by ESPN, completely useless. Outside of the state of Texas, who gives a shit about the Longhorn Network? When you are hemorrhaging money, you don't have the luxury of offering programming to a small region of the country. I think one of the first networks that we could see ESPN shut down is ESPN News. I mean, seriously. Who needs ESPN News in 2023? Why do I need to rely on some unknown shit fuck to give me updates on sports when I could just log into Twitter? And this goes back to what I said in the beginning. ESPN is struggling because ESPN no longer serves a purpose in the market. When ESPN started back in 1979, they were the only network that offered 24-hour coverage of sports. But over time, their business model has become antiquated. Outside of live sports, most people aren't watching ESPN. If you want documentaries on sports, plenty of them on Netflix. If you want debates on sports, plenty on YouTube. Where the people aren't constrained by corporate media and you don't feel like you're watching a polished turd. As you guys know, I am a diehard about my Saints and Pelicans. You know who I watch when I want content on my teams? Boot Crew Media on YouTube and Locked On Pelicans with Jake Madison. What the hell do I need ESPN for when I have people who actually know about my teams giving me coverage? There is a strong possibility that over the next few years, we could be remembering ESPN like we remember Blockbuster Video, something that was dominant during their run but couldn't figure out a way to survive a changing market. I'm standing by my prediction. ESPN could be extinct by 2030. What about you? Do you think ESPN can find a way to survive? Let me know. Sound off in the comments below. Like, subscribe. You guys know the drill by now. I appreciate all your support on the videos from this past weekend. If you come across something you want me to cover on the channel, shoot me an email, btlkc84 at gmail.com. This topic right here on ESPN actually came from a viewer. They sent it to me last night. I try to get to as many of them as I can, but obviously I can't get to all of them. But don't let that discourage you from sending. Follow me on Twitter at kc underscore btl84, and I'll see you guys later.